Hello everyone and welcome to another Good Game Empire video. Today I will be showing you all the changes in the March update which we got on 28th day of that month, uh, which was Monday. Alright, so let's begin. Uh, I will kind of sort those changes from the most important changes to the least important changes, yeah? So you will have a overview. Of course you have um, like video chapters available, so if you uh, hover over your mouse, hover your mouse over your um, YouTube uh, video player. Uh, you will see those chapters, so you can jump to a specific part of this video if you are interested in listening about only uh, part of those changes. I will of course explain in detail every change and what is the uh, you know uh, what will happen because of this change and stuff and so on and so on. So let's begin. Uh, the first the first change is come even difficulty scaling. So as you um, probably know, we have a can addition to the nomad event, but we didn't see it um, last few times, last few nomads, because it was under development uh, for being like, uh, you know, um, compatible with the difficulty scaling in nomad event. Uh, so from now on, the can invasion will be, um, you know, part of the difficulty scaling system. So they can um, attacks on you uh, and probably also they can camp um, defenses will depend on your difficulty level as well as your account strength. If you want to learn more about uh, how the difficulty scaling system affects the difficulty of the event, you can watch my uh, Nomad video part one, which is on my channel um, and learn more about the difficulty system. But for, for now, uh, we know that uh, we should probably see those this Khan event, um, I mean uh, Khan together with the Nomad event in, in two days, so it should start um, on Friday as usually uh, camp events um, start. So we should we should see Nomad uh, together with Khan addition to the Nomad invasion. Um, and what we know now is that we should also get some new rewards as well as uh, new items in the Khan medals shop. So. Uh, you wasn't able to buy anything actually during this period where when we didn't have Khan addition to the Nomad event. But as you can see now, for, uh, for example, I have many of those uh, Khan medals and this is not um, confirmed, so I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that we will have new items available to purchase for those uh, Khan medals. But if not, uh, then the statement uh, about this update note was that we will be able to earn new rewards for taking part in the Khan event. So at least we will get new rewards for uh, participating, which you might remember that if you, uh, when you uh, increase your Khan uh, level by one, you're getting 200 Khan medals as a Alliance reward. So these rewards could be changed and the items in the uh, Khan medals shop could be modified as well, so we should be looking forward to those changes. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very important as we have Nomad pretty much four out of seven days of each week in the game, so so that's worth uh, noticing of course as the first thing. All right, and the second thing also has to do with the even difficulty scaling actually, mm -hmm. uh, because I am now talking about the change in number of attacks uh, which you are required to do to complete achievements which unlock you higher difficulty levels in particular events. Uh, so what am I talking about basically is mm, when you go to these tab events, you can scroll down, down, down there and you will see those events which uh, require you to make attacks on a specified difficulty level on each event in order to unlock higher difficulty level for that event. So as you uh, probably already know, most of you uh, I hope, uh, you had to do 200 attacks in glory events as well as 200 attacks in camp events um, on is uh, on intermediate plus difficulty level in order to unlock high uh, or hard sorry difficulty level in uh, any given event yeah so this those numbers were changed actually and the numbers required for glory events were lowered by more than twice and also the numbers of attacks required um, on the camp events were doubled. Uh, kind of. I mean, it's 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 not exactly double, uh, but um, approximately doubled. So as you can see now, um, the number was two hundred attacks uh, per glory event to get to um, hard uh, difficulty level. 
So I have here the second one, level two, uh, to get heart plus, as you can see, yeah? So this previously required 250 because it stepped up like 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, um, and 450. And currently it has changed to uh, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100. So the total number of attacks you need to do to to do per uh, one glory event um, has uh, has changed from uh, 2,000 to 500. So it's a four times lower number of attacks you are required to do in glory events in order to complete all the achievements and to get maximum difficulty level unlocked for free for that event. Uh, and now talking about the camp uh, events, which is samurai and nomad. Uh, previously we had to do same for glory, uh, which was previously 200 attacks per event, yes? Uh, to get the hard difficulty level from intermediate plus to hard, then it was 250, 300, and so on and so on. And now it has been changed. So the first stage requires you to make 600 attacks in order to get uh, the hard difficulty level. And it goes up by 40 per one uh, higher difficulty level. So it's 600, 640, 680, 720, 760, and 800 to get the maximum difficulty level. Uh, so in total, we all we had the same number. We had around 2,000 attacks required per camp event to uh, complete all the achievements. And it has now gone to 4,200 attacks per event to make. So uh, in total, that's the number you need to make uh, to get all those achievements. So assuming that you are a free-to-play player and you don't spend any money on the game, um, we could assume that previously, when you had to do 200 attacks on those glory events and it stepped up to 50 free and so on, um, it was about one year to complete that uh, particular achievement for glory event. And when you had to do 200 attacks and so on and so on to 50 free uh, and so on, uh, attacks per uh, camp event, it could take you approximately, you know, one event um, for the lower numbers and two events for bigger numbers for free to play players because you could uh, buy um, 250, um, 250 um, one hour skips, yeah? So it would take you around um, three to four months uh, with this glory, uh, sorry, two, two months, around two months with this uh, camp events to complete in total, like one and a half to two months to complete camp achievements and now the glory achievements has come from one year to around four months uh, so it's three times lower approximately and the camp uh, the, um, achievements has gone from uh, around two months to around four months so as you can see the, the goal uh, the goal here was to make this time of complement of, of completion um, similar for both glory and camp events as you can see there yeah so uh, so that's the important point there in this change in the update, which is the second big change in the update. All right, and I think that's all. If you want to see all those numbers again uh, on paper, I mean on your screen, uh, you can head to my uh, Discord server. It's linked in the description of this video. And if when you go to GGE News uh, text channel, you can scroll up a bit and you will find all those numbers and, and exact uh, statements about this change as well as all the other all the other changes because we are informing here um, uh, When the changes take place and after the update. All right, so the third um, I think in the update is the LTPE event so the long-term points event um, I believe that's the um, abbreviation there <laughs> I, I'm not sure so LTP event um, which is this monthly event we get every month uh, this is Spring Nights Festival. Probably, uh, on you know, longer playing um, users will uh, know this event already uh, and will remember those equipment or those units, you know. But um, um, what's important there? This event will last um, up to the end of April of this year. So we have 33 days from now. So it's gonna be, um, you know, a little bit of March and all April we have. Mm, this event. So this event uh, has a list of rewards and a, a top 300 um, reward of Spring Blossoms. Um, uh, so this uh, these coins you can earn by uh, getting points in this event. 
and you can spend them at Master Blacksmith in exchange for some nice items. So as you can see there, we have a list of rewards where we have five pages and all the rewards are basically those spring blossoms. As you can see there, uh, approximately, uh, oh, and after you complete those five pages, you will unlock the second um, list of rewards, which will have another five pages, I believe. But in total, the approximate uh, number of those tokens you can earn is 15,000 uh, of spring blossoms. And as you can see, you can also get 7.5 thousand spring blossoms as being top 300 um, players in the rankings of um, the season points. Mm. But what's important there, you can earn around 15,000 points uh, by completing all the rewards. I believe it's 10,000 points to complete the second list of rewards. Mm. And now let's maybe take a look at the items at Master Blacksmith you can get for those uh, spring blossoms. So here, um, you can get upgrade tokens, construction tokens, seeds, um, and many other items. So from the first row we have, um, I would say the most important items there are seeds. Yep, uh, so this is the top one item you should buy, and top two item you should buy is construction tokens, basically. Um, that's just because seeds are crucial for account development right now and construction tokens are uh, also important for account development and for building up your mid infrastructure on your account, yeah, in your castles. So that's very important rewards to buy there. And as you can see, this is um, 300 and you have five left. So those limits reset every master blacksmith um, reset. So the, when the master blacksmith timer ends, we will see new master blacksmith. It happens at Friday. Uh, I believe 10 a.m. CET, Central European time, and that's when the reset uh, happens. So um, those limitations will will drop and you will be able to buy those items again, of course, as usually in Master Blacksmith. So as you can see there, it's only five left. So we will pay uh, 1.5 thousand for, for five packages of this. And if we buy the construction tokens, which limit and price is the same, we spend uh, one and a half thousand plus one and a half thousand. So we will spend in total three thousand buying all seeds and all construction tokens available per reset. So we will spend three thousand um, spring blossoms per reset, and we will have approximately five resets, including the current uh, one reset, uh, five or six resets. Yes. So five times three thousand. Uh, spring blossoms equals 15,000 spring blossoms and that's the number we can approximately earn by completing uh, all their list of rewards in the event so this will let us um, buy seeds and construction tokens in all Bla uh, master blacksmith um, iterations basically so if you want to focus on those two items you shouldn't buy any other items you should only spend your blossoms on seeds and construction tokens. But taking a closer look, we have, um, this is not profitable at all. Uh, this, this isn't good too. No, no, uh, big no, you're getting plus 100 foot production. That's basically nothing. Um, here we have a rosewood keep, and this is a um, temporary build item for appearance slot uh, for the keep building and you will gain plus 40 combat strength for ranged units for those 28 days. This is not the greatest item. I would more recommend this item, which is twice, uh, I mean, this is twice uh, as expensive as those items, yeah? And those items are the same, um, uh, you know, remaining time, but this one gives you plus 48 flank unit limit. That's way, way better, basically. And this one gives you plus 24% strength in the courtyard when attacking also the time um, the time here is as you can see 28 days so i would recommend if you really want to buy one of them and keep them until war happens for example because those items are basically great items they are seriously great because you're saving a lot of rubies um, on not buying those items for rubies yeah you have this for one month that's insane so it's worth buying for like strong PvP players, basically. If you are like, you know, war enjoys, uh, this is for you basically. But, but if you are also developing your account, I would recommend buying seeds and construction tokens. All right, and the rest of items are decorations, but they are way overpriced. It's not worth to, to, to buy them. This is decoration five by five. So, so this is half of size of usual decoration we have in the game. And it grants you 2000. 
Uh, this decoration is um, normal size decoration, springtime tower, which gives you 3.8 thousand public decoration, but uh, again, the price is very high. And by spending all the tokens you earn, you can actually buy a trade district, which is, uh, take a closer look, which is already on level five. So we are getting it on level five already, not on level one. So we're actually saving some tokens on upgrading it, as you can see there. Uh, but I wouldn't uh, get it unless you really, really want it hard. Uh, but unless you don't want it really hard, I wouldn't recommend it. This is the best choice there in this event. All right, so now back to Spring Nights Festival. Let's take a closer look at the top uh, rewards. So we have Spring Blossom 7 and 5. Uh, 7,500 spring, spring Blossoms for top 300 players, uh, 500 upgrade tokens as well. For top 150, we are getting a um, record breaking 4,000 public order springtime tower decoration, mm, very nice there, and 250 construction tokens for those 150 top players. And now the, you know, reward of the show, which is top five players, um, royal reward basically yeah the broken egg tavern appearance build item for your tavern keep in mind that you can have uh, and you most of you probably have because if you don't you should build them three taverns in your main castle so uh, one uh, this is only limited to main castle you cannot put this item in outposts nor kingdoms you can only put this in main castle basically so that's the one uh, thing to notice there about this item and two this item stated that you can put maximally 100 of them per castle so you can use more than one of this kind of item on your taverns so you can for example apply one uh, which is uh, permanent and one which is temporary basically mm. but well maybe you will have another opportunity to earn such item uh, maybe next year or next LTP will maybe have the same reward. You will be able to put two or three, maximally three of those items on your taverns. So that's nice. And 500 seats as a booster there. Mm, very nice. All right, so keep, the, keep in mind that those rewards are rewards for players who are on legendary level between 800 and 950. So basically high uh, legendary levels, uh, level players. Mm, and remember that we have those kind of um, division, um, you know, we are divided into separate um, parts. So if you're on legendary level, basically if your legendary level uh, was in this, um, in this part from 1 to 7.99, when the event started, uh, you will be in this list of users. And if you're below legendary level on 50 to 69, this is your um, you're competing, you know, you're competing with those players here uh, and also rewards are different. On these levels, you are getting a courtyard plus 6% strength on the courtyard. Also, it is per uh, permanent and for the tavern. And on these uh, legendary levels, you are getting plus 12% appearance item to your tavern. Also, uh, permanent mm, gives you plus 12% courtyard strength. And I believe that here it is for top one player only. Here is for top five and here is for top five. Uh, it might also vary depending on your server size. I believe that in German server, it might be top top 10, not, not top five, for example. So it may vary um, depending on your server activity. Uh, all right. And I think that's all about the LTPE, new LTPE. I think it's great. So good opportunity to get some cool Really nice rewards. All right, um, and of obviously how this works, you are getting those points for making attacks in the events. All right, so that's all about LTP change in this update. So next big change. Next big change has to do with honey and meat build items. They were buffed, they were doubled basically. So what we've got uh, is four build items uh, connected with meat and honey production uh, were doubled, uh, starting with the most common one, I believe, which is plus 1,100 uh, production, which has become actually plus 2,200. That's great, lovely. So all those relic um, items uh, um, for um, your apiary 
was doubled. The value of, uh, of its bonus was doubled on all levels. So as you can take a closer look, as you probably remember, it was plus 1,100 and right now it's plus 200,000 and every next level gives you 200 more in this item, yeah? Um, also the same applies for the uh, main uh, slot. Uh, so as you can see, it previously was plus 15 honey production bonus and now it is plus 30. So this bonus basically gets multiplied by your uh, bonus factors such as public order or honey gardens and this is a flat bonus. So this will just increase the number by a flat, by a flat amount and this will increase uh, but will be also multiplied by your bonuses and both of them were doubled. So that's very nice. Um, basically, yeah. And I was also checking that if now uh, the main slot, primary slot build item is worth it because previously it wasn't that worth it. Um, but right now I must tell you that it's pretty pretty nice because take a look, uh, 5,923 and if we, if we take it out, it's 400 less actually. So level one uh, primary slot gives you 400, yeah? Remember, this is dependent on your public order and or your, on your bonus buildings, and this is a flat number bonus, yeah? But still, my decorations are good, but this is uh, a, you know, noticeable bonus. So you might, um, you know, consider doing those items. You can also put 10 of them in your apiaries in total in per, per one castle, uh, and you can increase significantly your meat, uh, your, sorry, your honey production. All right, and the second two items, uh, have to do with the meat production. So first one is brewery, which used to be plus 5,100 flat number bonus to meat production per hour. And right now it has become, after the up update, it is now plus 10,200 meat production per hour, which, which is nice. nice. Uh, so we have this doubled. And the most important thing to notice there, to note there, is that if you use it, for example, uh, if you use it to um, to recruit units, to keep a little bit of units without, um, you know, upgrading um, storage, for example. Here, where's my storage, basically? Yeah, storage level 7, as you can see, only one apiary. But my brewery, um, my brewery, as you can see there, it's on 0% production, it's stopped, yeah, basically. But this uh, bonus from the item is still giving me some production, so now this is twice as much. Lovely. Uh, so I can keep twice as much units without actually uh, starting producing meat in my brewery. That's very nice. Uh, so I think that's all. Oh, oh, and also the build item for primary slot for the brewery was doubled as well. So this item it has now double bonus and together all the next levels give you double, uh, I mean twice as much as it was before. Uh, still, I wouldn't bother with this item. It is giving only plus 70 multiplied by bonuses, which for meat production, uh, where you have one brewery, uh, is very small, basically. <laughs> so I wouldn't uh, rec recommend using this. Um, and talking about the storage items, their bonuses were not doubled. So they are same as they were before. And also to note there, uh, bonuses for um, granaries and basically food production, which uh, had uh, 1,100, still have the same value. So only four affected items were two uh, items for honey production and two items for meat production, one relic and one primary each. All right, so next change, uh, let's uh, proceed to other changes, but we have many other changes and starting with the most important other change, which might seem kind of scary to, to you when you hear it for the first time, account delete option, account deletion option. So basically now, uh, let me maybe hide myself for just a second to let you show this. Um, so here you have settings of your account and you go to options, yeah? So you have your game settings, you have Ruby purchase confirmation, that's usual stuff, yeah? But you have account enhancement and here we have one new tab basically, which says Empire account. So this actually doesn't say anything about deletion, but uh, warning, deleting your account will result in a loss of all your good game Empire data, including login information, game progress, and any in-game purchases you have made. Delete account, will I? 
When you click on this, you have this pop-up. And it says, uh, we will analyze this text in a second. So you will you have a like delay of this button. You can delete or you can abort um, this process. So what, what we see there is, let me just read this and uh, like, um, you know, uh, make my voice um, more, I mean, higher uh, when I speak about most important parts. Basically, uh, selecting the delete account option will start the, the process of deleting your good game per user account. The deletion will be init initialized 14 days after confirming. So it will happen after 14 days after you click on this button, yeah? Um, during which time you can still access your account and cancel the deletion request. Once this period has passed, you will no longer be able to log into the game. This will delete all your good game of our data, including login information, um, game progress and purchases, and your complete personal data. All data deletion is handled according to the GDPR regulations. All right, so what GDPR is, you probably, most of you know of this. So this is European Union, um, like low, kind of, you know, group of law um, statements. Uh, about privacy in, in in network, yeah, basically in, in the internet. Mm, so, uh, as I would assume, the uh, good game studios had to do this um, because um, they were required to, you know, allow you to uh, opt out all your privacy information from their servers, basically, yeah. Uh, so all personal data, and funny fact that. Uh, when you wanted to delete your account, you could message uh, the support and they would deny your request, actually. They would say, just wait for your account, your account to go into ruins, to turn into ruins, and it's gonna be gone, basically. But if you would tell them that you are requesting a total deletion of your personal data according to the GDPR regulations, they would actually accept your, uh, your request confirm it by your email, of course, and they will delete your account permanently, instantly, actually. So now we have similar option, but with a delay of 14 days. So what I will say now, remember, don't share your password, um, because now you are, um, you know, in a risk of someone locking into your account and starting to delete it. And will you notice? You might not notice that someone uh, went there and requested a deletion of your account. If I'm not mistaken, you are um, you need to confirm it by your password and by clicking in your email inbox. So this is not so easy to, to delete the account, yeah? Basically, uh, but that's, that's what we have here in this change. All right, so next uh, small change is Master Blacksmith items list order change. So basically the items were reordered uh, so we have them in different, um, you know, in different order. Um, the buildings are the first, then wave items, uh, units and tools, then build items, uh, then appearance items, uh, then decorations, then relic equipment, um, the red equipment, and uh, down the bottom we have affluence tickets, we have some fusion items, exchanging gold to silver and VIP time. And going to silver pieces, this is actually what I really, really like. They made a good job there, I must say. Um, the order here is perfect, so we have units first, then tools, then tools for the events. Um, as you can see, they are one event um, after another, so they are not mixed as they were before. We have Nomad, Berrymont, Samurai, and now we have the appearance items for combat um, here. Some fusion stuff here. Um, some um, materials to, to build your regular build items, uh, time skippers, mm, and VIP points, uh, gold pieces, exchange, and tickets. Oh, and last, uh, last line, actually, very important thing, fast travel footers uh, are down there. All right, so that's about Master Blacksmith. Uh, Colossus event is back, actually. So after a few years, I think we've seen it last time, like 20, 18 or something like this, so it was like three or four years, I believe. Uh, the Colossus event, so many newer players to the game might not actually know this event. So, you know, it, it was there for last five days, uh, so you could already, you, you already had the chance to, to get in touch with this event, but basically what it is, uh, you are um, 
investing resources to, vo to develop your own decorations, which is the Colossus. So as you, um, as you, you know, um, as you pay the uh, resources and keep in mind that stone will give you uh, more points, you're getting Colossus points. And the more points, the more uh, public order you are getting. But keep in mind that um, you know, the increment of this public order get, is getting lower um, as you put in and put in more resources. So um, in the beginning, it's very easy to get, to get public order, but later it's getting harder and harder and harder. This kind of reminds me of a math function of a square root, I believe. Uh, so that's, that's how it basically looked in Excel back those days because people had those Excels, how many points you need to put there there to get the public order. But obviously this public order is crap, yeah? Like, well, it's just for sentiment, I believe. Uh, maybe I know the reason why they are launching it again and why it has so small number of public order. It is very nice for small players though. So if you are a small player, put some resources, attack some nomads, put some resources and you can easily get a decoration of 150 maybe public order paying some resources. Seriously, it's a very nice opportunity to get cool decoration and it's your own because it has your nickname in its name. That's very nice, lovely. So you also have a leaderboard there who paid the most resources basically. And keep in mind that we had a, a three different versions of the Colossus event. So the second one was uh, the horse rider basically. So there was a, um, like, like this decoration will be a like building of a Colossus. But the other the Colossus version was a warrior riding a horse. That's what it looked. And the third version was the golden Colossus, which based on putting not uh, resources, but your coins. Uh, so you were supposed to put your coins in order to get the Colossus points to increase the number of public order it would have. Um, and that's what it was. It uh, it looked a bit different though. Uh, all right, so next up we have um, the front option in uh, Bloody Crows and in Foreign Lords events, uh, basically in Glory events, we again have the throne option. So it is uh, useful on the classic version of those events to mm, increase the number of units there uh, by Exile or Fortify. But here, uh, if we are picking like intermediate plus or hard or hard plus, basically the difficulty scaling thing, scaling thingy in those events, uh, the more important uh, usage of this um, defrone is to exile. You could, um, you know, to you could change the castle's defensive configuration, defensive setup, basically. So, for example, if you don't like one of those buildings, uh, one of those castles, basically, if you don't like, let's say. I don't like this uh, setup, maybe, maybe yeah, or, or maybe this one, yeah. I don't like this setup. Uh, take a look, 228 Relic Hammerman. Uh, so we do this, and as you can see, this changed. We now have a different setup, um, defensive setup in this castle, but the total number of units stayed the same. All right, uh, or yeah, maybe maybe it got a bit bigger, but I believe it stays the same when you exile. But if you fortify, it actually says there plus 500 to plus 1000. And that's a lie. They are liars to you. I mean, this should be changed actually because this is kind of misleading. Basically, what you will get out of fortifying a um, glory a castle, which is on a difficulty scaling version of the event, will increase the total number of units by approximately 40%. That's a lot. I used to get here 12,000, as you can see, let's count this, yeah? This is like four and half, like five and five together with the units on the wall. So this is 10,000, 11, 12, 13, yeah? Around 12,000, yeah? And when you fortify, let's make an example, click, success, exponage. Oh, I can actually, nice, I can do the usual exponage because as you can see, I have the automatic exponage, so I cannot tell you the total number. Uh, because of this, but here we have 17,000 of military units there and it was, as you can see, yeah, it was 4,000 something, now it has become 600 something. So as you can see there, um, the defensive setup I believe is the same, but the total number of units um, is bigger, is greater. So um, summing up, 
exile you can use it when you don't like the defensive setup to change the defensive setup on the walls and fortify you can use it to increase the number of units in the foreign castle by approximately uh, 35 to 50 percent right and uh, lastly bug fixes you can access the total uh, like the complete list of bug fixes in the video description there is nothing really like super important to 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 tell about such as, I don't know, uh, white arrows or something getting fixed, nothing big uh, there. So you will see this in the video description. And I believe that's all I had to, to present to you today. So hopefully this video was helpful to, to you and, and clear to your mind about all the changes in this, um, you know, in this um, update. I must say that this was a pretty big update and it introduced some uh, influential and uh, important changes making huge difference to our gameplay. Um, we will see the Khan though, we will see the Khan and I will make a separate video on Khan, it will be probably kind of guide and, and taking a first look on the Khan invasion, how it is uh, connected with the difficulty scaling thingy. Uh, so we will be taking a look at it in a separate video. Um, and for this video, I think that's all. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like or dislike depending on your thoughts of uh, my video. Um, you can also share your, your opinion in the comments section. And I believe that's all. So thank you very much for watching. Um, maybe you recognize that one little change in today's video. I've got my new PC setup, which will um, improve the video experience of you watching it. Uh, hopefully because we will have a smoother transition, smoother working Good Game Empire basically because this PC is kind of monstrous and as you can see the Good Game Empire Good Game Empire is working faster as you can see like the map isn't lagging it's like freaking smooth really smooth like take a look it's you know it's way smoother than it used to be on my old PC at least and like changing castles takes like one second maybe boom it's so quick nice so basically that will be on new videos they will be higher quality I, I already changed my video setup to be higher quality so I hope it's gonna be even better but I think it was pretty decent already all right so that's all for today thank you very much for listening for watching and see you in the next one probably on Sunday on the live stream or maybe I will have time on Friday so I will make a video on Khan uh, we will see so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.